This video is sponsored by Xbloom and its new Xbloom coffee machine. Stick around till the end of this video to learn more. There are tons of hidden messages, secret images, and Easter eggs throughout all of Apple's products. And in macOS specifically, there are 10 Easter eggs that before doing this video, I had no idea about, and they have some incredibly interesting backstories behind them. And so that's what we're gonna do in this video. And if there are Easter eggs that you think of that I don't mention in this video, and it doesn't have to be for Mac OS, but for any of Apple's products, let me know in the comments down below. And if you end up liking this video, hit the like button, subscribe of course, but tell me in those comments and I will make another video with more Easter eggs. So let's start small, head into system settings, users and groups, and then click on your profile picture. Click suggestions to find a bunch of classic profile avatars, including a vinyl record. Now, what's interesting about the record specifically is that if you zoom in on the tracks on the EP, the names are a tribute to Steve Jobs' favorite expressions. So you have number one, which is magic, two, revolution, three, boom, and four, unbelievable. If you download any file and then you end up pausing the download midway through, did you know that if you right click and then select get info and check out the date that the file was created, it'll say January 24th, 1984. And that's not an error. It's actually the date that Steve Jobs formally unveiled the first Macintosh. Let the download complete and then it'll just change to the actual date that the file was created, which would be whatever date that you downloaded the file on. In the late 1980s, Jim Reeks began working as a sound designer for Apple, creating some of the Mac's most iconic sounds, like the Sosumi beep, startup chord, and the camera slash screenshot click. Now, the reason for the name Sosumi was due to a lawsuit from the Beatles record label, which was also named Apple. Now, at the time, Steve Jobs promised that his company would stay focused on computers and not get involved with music so that the two similarly named companies could actually coexist. Well, as we all know, Apple didn't stay away from music, and it first started with Macs adding support for audio recording and MIDI, a standard that connects musical instruments to computers. And so the Beatles sued and forced Reeks to rename any sound effect that had a musical sounding name. So Reeks' frustration with the lawsuit eventually led to the name Sosumi because it sounded like So Sue Me. He told the lawyers that it was just a Japanese word that didn't mean anything musical. Now in macOS Big Sur or later, if you go into system settings or system preferences and you look at the sounds and all the alerts, it's actually renamed to Sonumi, but look for the sound file in system slash library slash sounds, go through that folder path, and you'll find that it's still named sosumi.aiff. Sneaky. Apple and Microsoft have been generally friendly over the years towards one another, but every so often, each company will take a subtle dig at one another here and there. And if your Mac is in a shared network alongside a Windows PC, the PC will actually be represented with a vintage looking computer icon that has Microsoft's infamous blue screen of death displayed on the icons display, which if you ask me is actually a pretty funny dig. Apple's iconic Think Different marketing campaign will be remembered by probably a lot of people, not least for its Steve Jobs quote, which you can read here if you want to on the screen, just go ahead and pause the video, but it's the first line, here's to the crazy ones that you can see hidden in several spaces across Mac OS. So if you go into system settings and under displays, the words can be seen in the resolution examples when choosing for larger text or more space. Zoom in on the open book emoji and you'll see the same text on its pages. There's also a silver coin emoji with the words, the crazy ones emblazoned over the image of an eagle. Open your Mac's emoji keyboard and enter the word MOOF, M-O-O-F, into the search field. What you get is a dog and a cow, you know, for moo and woof. But that's also a clever reference to Claris, a bitmap image of the dog cow that was used to demonstrate page layouts in classic Mac OS. Here's another fun one. If you open up the Voice Memos app and record yourself saying the word Apple, does the waveform look familiar to you? Well, if it doesn't, go ahead and look down at the Voice Memos icon and you'll see that it's the exact same waveform that's used for the icon. It's someone saying Apple, which is another neat little Easter egg. If you open up Safari and then click on the tab bar here in the top left corner, and you look at the words reading list or search out reading list, the glasses icon are actually the iconic round rimless Robert Mark eyeglasses worn by none other than Steve Jobs. 
Back in the day when macOS shipped with GNU Emacs installed, Terminal was a haven for Easter eggs. Now with the right kind of command line knowledge, users were able to fire up hidden games like Tetris or Snake, access cookie recipes, and even speak to the therapist inside every computer. Since the Emacs command line interface was removed in macOS Catalina, those days are unfortunately long gone, but there still are a couple of neat fun facts to be found in Terminal. So for a quick example, you can actually enter in this command line for a list of historical facts for every single day of the year. Now, we left this one for last because, quite frankly, we aren't able to 100% corroborate its story, uh, so the claim's accuracy is up for debate, so you can call it a rumor if you want to. With that said, take a look at the design of the Stocks app icon. Do you see that blue line pinpointing the peak in a stock's value? According to MacLife, this is supposed to represent the moment when Apple's share value surpassed Dell in January of 2006. Now, for a little bit of backstory, in 1997, when Steve Jobs returned to an ailing Apple, Dell CEO Michael Dell was asked what he would do if he was in charge of the company. Dell famously responded, what would I do? I would shut it down and give the money back to the shareholders. According to one Apple employee at the time on hearing this advice, Steve Jobs responded, F Michael Dell. Jobs never forgot what he had said, obviously, and even shared an email with his employees at the expense of Dell on the day its stock surged to push the company's market capitalization to over $72 billion, passing Dell's value of $71.97 billion. So maybe the Stocks app icon is just a coincidence, or maybe it was deliberately designed to memorialize that moment. And just given what I've heard about Steve Jobs, I wouldn't doubt if it was the latter. So that's it. Those were 10 super fun Easter eggs inside of macOS specifically, and if you know of your own Easter egg in macOS, or if there's one in any of Apple's products, let us know in the comments down below, and maybe if you like this video, we'll make another one with some of those suggestions. Now, before we end today's video, I'm going to have past Dan, who is wearing a completely different shirt, sitting at a completely different set, tell you about today's sponsor, Xbloom, and its new Xbloom coffee machine. This is a capsule machine, but trust me, it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. This is a sleek and modern machine that's perfect for those who appreciate finer coffee moments. And guess what? The experts agree. It's the first machine that truly embodies the essence of third wave coffee. Now, my first impressions of this machine is that it is incredibly sturdy and very well built. Created by two Apple veterans, its elegant geometric forms and premium metallic finish is definitely a countertop statement. Or just simply put, it looks amazing. These pods that the machine uses contain 15 grams of freshly roasted whole beans. Their curated marketplace features top roasters from the US, Canada, and Europe with new releases all the time. Each coffee is dialed in with its detailed brewing recipe in the NFC tag on the bottom of the pod to bring out the best flavors. And the biodegradable material made from sugarcane is the sweet finishing detail. It's super intuitive to use. There's no complicated screens or buttons. Just scan, pour, and tap. Usually it takes even a professional five to 10 tries to get the coffee's flavors right. All of those are taken care of and stored in the NFC, and Xbloom is able to execute it perfectly every time. You can guarantee that you're now drinking this particular cup of coffee at its finest flavor. I can't believe I was drinking like sometimes stale coffee for years, and I'm never going back to an old filtered drip machine coffee ever again. The Xbloom offers so much versatility. You can use it as a standalone grinder, personalize your own recipes, and explore different specialty coffees without committing to a whole bag. So whether you're an experienced coffee lover or just starting your coffee journey, the Xbloom is a game changer. Trust me, once you taste the difference, there's no going back. Cheers to a new way of enjoying coffee.